to Tom O'Dell, the wonderful singer-songwriter. He's got his new track coming out and his new album. Um, let's see what he had to say. Tom, how's it going? I hope you can hear me okay. I'm just checking the levels this end. I'm not bursting yeah, your yeah, eardrums, am I? No, good. Oh, cool. Lovely. Well, thanks. I'm Karen Ridgers. I'm one of the presenters here on um, Phoenix FM, which we go out all over Essex. So really pleased for you to take time out and speak to us um, today. How's it all going? Have you, have you got a whirlwind of people to talk to? Uh, we're doing a few today, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, no, it's great. It's great to speak to you. Oh. It's great. Uh, it's nice for you to uh, you know, have you on the show. Oh, thank you. That's really lovely. Have you been to Essex before? Uh, one of my best friends is uh, from Essex. Woohoo! Whereabouts? Um, he's from, I think, from, is it Braintree? Yeah, just uh, down the road. We love a bit of Braintree. Yeah, yeah Braintree. So, do you pop uh, out and go drinking with him? I, I you know, I, I've, I've only ever been to Chelmsford, actually. Yeah. I've not been to, uh, I've not, I've not, uh, but actually, I think my, um, I think my mum was born in Essex. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Bishop Stalford, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think my mum was born there. Oh, so, um, so you're kind of like an back. honorary Essex guy. I'm, I'm an honorary Essex guy. We'll let you in the club. Yeah. Next thing you'll be popping up on Towie. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that will happen. But, uh, <laughs> That's amazing. Well, look, Tom, you know, you're really outstanding. Everybody loves you. Everybody loves your music. I'm going to take it back. I know you're talking about your new single, which we're, we're going to be playing later as well, if you want to love somebody. But I want to take you back a little bit because, you know, when I'm speaking to brilliant people who I really admire for their, their musical talent, I wonder, you know, was there a defining moment, you know, you know, when you were, you know, a young kid and you thought or you saw someone or you heard something and you thought, that's what I want to do. I want to be a singer, songwriter, musician. You know, was there that one thing and you thought, that's it? Uh, I think... I think there was probably lots of things. I have, I have a, I have a few very early memories of maybe being five or six years old and uh, being at like a, uh, a sort of fake or something. I can't remember what it was. We were somewhere. We were. I was out with my parents and there was, and I had this faint memory of a band playing on like a, a band stand or something. Oh, how cool! Um, and they. I remember seeing it and being very young and, and being completely mesmerized and, uh, by what they were doing. And, and, and I remember that, that sensation lasting uh, for a long time. And, and then perhaps the next time, uh, maybe I was like 10 or something, I remember seeing Brian Ferry. Oh, yeah, we do, yeah, yeah. Uh, at uh, another concert. And I remember him, I remember being quite mesmerized by that as well. My, I, I, my parents, about it, they said I used to go into a sort of uh, hypnotized state whenever really? I'd sort of see live music. So I just, yeah, my early memories of, of, of it were that. And then, and then also coupled with that was hearing my grandmother play the piano and, and then just wanting desperately to play it myself. And really? Eventually, you know, quite, quite young. I started quite young when I was about seven. So. Yeah. Um, so, so music's been a big part of my life since I was very young I think. I was going to say did you grow up with music then has it been something because I remember I, I, I was speaking to Molly Beddingfield who is Natasha Beddingfield and Daniel Beddingfield's mum and you know I had a lovely conversation with her and, at an event and she just said we've just we've always had music music was just part of our lives and we had musicians coming in and playing and music right. was there all right. the time Do, was that like that for you? No, it actually, I, it wasn't actually. No, it was. It was. It was. My my family aren't. Apart from my grandmother, my family aren't particularly musical at all. Oh. Um, it was. It was more that I sort of seeked it out myself, and um, and I think in some way that actually was helpful because it made it sort of my thing. Yeah. It yeah. Made it, okay. Because they never sort of treasured me into it, and um, it was. It was. It, they were sort of quietly supportive, but. Um, but it was very much my sort of like my sort of secret little thing that I loved and, and uh, it was like I discovered this whole world and 
it was sort of all mine and I don't know it's weird I, I think I was quite sort of um I, I, I don't know I guess I guess I just had it's like like any, like even even just then I was just driving uh, I had to go and get some passport photos. Oh God, I got <laughs> mine done the other day. Seriously, yeah, if I look like if I look like my passport yeah. photo, I'm not going to leave the country. How did yours no, turn I out? I, you know what? I, I I barely even looked at it. I was just like took it out of oh, yeah. um, You probably look fantastic, but for me, it was no, a shock to the system. No, at all. No, I would. I would. I. I disagree. I, 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 think, I think we all look. We all look terrible. Oh, yeah. um, but it was. But it was. It was. But it was. You know, just. You know, just then, like driving. I was like, I was listening to this um, uh, live album from Billy Joel, and I was listening to it, and I just suddenly like, oh, I felt so like, like it was just sort of. He was singing directly to me, and it was mm. like, I just had it, it's, it's such a wonderful. Like intimate thing music, and um, I still just get so enthralled by it and excited by it, and um, I feel very lucky that I get to do it as a job every day. Of course, it's lovely. I mean, I, I, I play great music, and, and you know, I'm recording a show at the moment, and I'm playing the top twenty greatest rock bands of all time, and I'm playing this most fantastic music, and it really does make it can change your state, can't it? Who's number one? I can't tell you. No, I will. I will uh, tell you. I will tell you. It's well. Who do you no, think? I'll who do you think? Who? I'll have to. I'll listen in. Oh, we listen in, and of course, that. and then we won't spoil yeah. it. But so who, um, do I, who do I think's number one? Yeah. I think that um, who's the number one rock band of all time? I mean, I arguably the Rolling Stones. They're in and, there. Uh, They're in there, Tom. Yeah. Led Zeppelin. They're in there. Uh, I mean, would you call the Beatles a rock band? Oh, know. you're good. You're good, Tom. Yeah. Shall I tell you? They're number Who? one. The Beatles are number one. The Beatles. Yeah, right. in the top 20 right. all time. And you've got your Oasis, you've got your Smiths. I mean, music that I love. The Stones, Pink Floyd, Radiohead. Pink Floyd. Just yeah. brilliant. Who else influences you? I mean, you mentioned Roxy Music. They're in the top 20 bands. Yeah, I love Roxy Music. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm sort of... Inc I'm sort of... The 70s was, was a period... Is a period that I listen to a lot. Um, but isn't that weird? Because that you're, you're only in your late 20s now, aren't you? But you yeah, like but the music. Yeah. But I think what's interesting is my sort of generation we we were the sort of we 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 were the sort of first generation we had this like completely boundless access to music from all eras because of the internet yeah so like and, and and it was this sort of i think the most wonderful thing about what internet did to music you know obviously it did some bad things to music as well but like one of the things it did do is it it meant that that access was never a problem uh -huh. and so and so i grew up with the internet, you know, yeah. uh, I guess that's one of the first generations to, but it never bothered me when music was made. And so I was just drawn to whatever music I mm. liked the most. And I like it, that. It, it didn't ever occur to me that that had been made 40 years before, 20 years before. Mm. Only afterwards I realized, oh, I seem to look, I, see, I do seem to listen to a lot of music that's made between 1969 and 1976. Amazing. I don't know why that is. Yeah. I think, I think it's because the, 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 the sort of, technology and the songwriting was like at this sort of perfect arc yeah uh where the tech you couldn't really like fudge a bad song into a good song mm. like with with, with with studio technology like you maybe could in the 80s mm. uh because the technology got so good uh so i i think it was very much about songwriting in the 70s and, and i think uh, I, I guess a, a massive sort of uh sort of motto I guess or or mantra for my career so far has been I'm just the thing I'm most obsessed with is songwriting I'm obsessed yeah. with music and lyrics yeah and that's the thing that that gets me the most excited what comes Not, first uh, for you then you know do you do you have this tune and think oh these words will go well or do you you know write the the lyrics and then formulate the music around it I think it's it's always different. It's mm. best it's best when they come together, actually. Yeah. Um, it's best when they come at the same time. But 
But oh, I think I guess the, con- the the one consistent thing is the fact that I nearly always write them on the piano. Mm, um, that's lovely. And particularly with this this new album, Jubilee Road, which comes yep. out in October. Yeah. That was all written on this one piano in 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 a house and on the street that inspired the name of the album and. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really excited for people to hear it. This, this new album is very much about community and, and home and family, and um, and I, I don't know. I sort of, in a weird way, I feel like it's been this this new album is the album I've been trying to make for sort of 15 years in a strange wow, way. Gosh. It sounds a bit over the top, that, but like I feel like I finally felt confident in the studio and uh, like I was able to sort of uh, do exactly what I wanted to do with the sound. That's amazing. I love that. And, you know, I, I know a few song, you know, singer, songwriters and musicians, and I love to ask them, when you're just sitting there and chilling, do you listen to your own music? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, I have to stare at photos. Stare at photos of myself and uh, listen to my music. I heard a great story about, uh, about someone going around Frank Snart's house. Oh. And apparently, if you went around Frank Sinatra's house, you would he would just have his albums yeah. uh, on the sort of soundtracking throughout the house oh. and he, his own music. And I always found that quite funny. Yeah, it's sort of like um, you know, like you have to sort of, you're forced to listen to his music when you go around his house. Oh my gosh! Uh, so I can't think of anything worse than my free time listening to my own music. <laughs> I, I literally, uh, I spend enough time talking about myself. Dude. Oh, do you? Literally. The last thing I want to do, I, I even I even avoid radio stations <gasps> that might play my music. <laughs> like I, can't, I, 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 I I avoid anything where I might potentially hear it because of through pure fear of like the fact that I, I just the last thing I ever want to do is listen to my own voice that makes me cringe. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Just, I'll just imagine you're driving along and then it's like, you know, your tune plays and you're like, oh no, quick, turn up, like, change the channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just listened to Radio 4 <laughs> in the car. Uh, oh my yeah. gosh, you're so funny. Tell me, what's been the highlight of your career so far? I mean, you were with the Stones and they're in, in, in the top 20 that I'm playing, of course. Um, you know, what what has been the biggest thing for you? Or not necessarily the biggest thing, but the thing that you just think, wow, I love this. Um, so I think the thing I'm most proud of is um, genuinely, I think, being able to make three albums. And I, I think I remember being 16, I, it was always a dream of mine to be able to make three albums and have that back cost catalogue and be able to do live shows. And I'm really proud that I got to this point. And um, uh, I think overall, over any sort of chart success or anything like that, I, just, I, I, I feel, I feel very proud of that. I think. But anyway, it's been lovely. lovely it's been story. lovely speaking to you. Really yeah. good luck with the yeah. with the track. Good luck with the album. When you're visiting yeah. your friend for a drink in Braintree, come along and pop into Brentwood. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, so Tom. All Thanks. the best. Nice you. And you. Bye bye. Bye.